Hello and welcome to the Lines That Never Were series, where we talk about proposed but forgotten New York City subway projects. In this video, we will talk about the proposed Bronx branches that fed into the 2nd Avenue subway, including its history, remnants, and whether those branches are needed today. In 1920, as a result of plans to demolish the aging 2nd and 3rd Avenue L and to support a growing subway system, the 2nd Avenue subway was proposed. In the Bronx, the subway would head via 3rd Avenue and turn east via Tremont Avenue to run all the way to Bayshore Avenue on the eastern coast of the Bronx. Those plans were revised in 1929 under the IND second system. The Bronx portion of the 2nd Avenue subway would involve three branches. The first would branch off the trunk line at Boston Road at 163rd Street and head to Throgs Neck via Lafayette Avenue. The second and third branches would continue on Boston Road and split at East 180th Street. One branch would take over the northern portion of White Plains and the second branch would go via Morris Park Avenue and Wilson Avenue meeting up with the extended concourse line and ending at Baychester Avenue. But due to the Great Depression, this proposal became more unlikely as the city was struggling to complete the IND first system. After the New York, Westchester, and Boston Railroad went bankrupt in 1937, most of the Northeast Bronx branches were axed from the plans as officials wanted to buy it and connected to either the Pelham Line or the White Plains Road Line. The 1939 plan was evident of this, as the route had been greatly simplified to just a single branch via Lafayette Avenue to Throgs Neck. But due to World War II, that branch was postponed. In 1944, a second branch along 3rd Avenue was added to replace the aging 3rd Avenue L in the Bronx. But by 1945, planners wanted more. So they proposed connecting the subway line with the Pelham Line, Dyer Avenue Line, Concourse Line, and along the planned Lafayette Avenue Line. The 3rd Avenue branch appears to be scrapped. In 1947, even more new updates came. This time, the branch to Throgs Neck was removed. Instead, planners wanted to connect the subway with the Pelham Line. Platforms would be shaved back to allow wider B-Division cars to use them. A separate branch would end at 3rd Avenue, 149th Street to allow transfers to the 3rd Avenue L and White Plains Road Line. And this is speculation, but this branch to 149th Street may have been connected to the 3rd Avenue L in the future. A bond measure was passed in the early 1950s to help pay for the line but that bond was used to repair the aging system. The 2nd Avenue subway was left in the dust. In 1963, a new 2nd Avenue subway was planned. This time, the Pelham branch would be retained, but a second branch via the concourse line would be added. This plan obviously went nowhere, but it did serve as inspiration five years later. In 1968, the program for action was proposed. Once again, the 2nd Avenue subway was to have branches in the Bronx. The subway would enter the Bronx and curve under 138th Street with a cross-platform transfer at Brook Avenue before running express on a separate right-of-way under the Pelham Line and onto Amtrak's Hell Gate Line. At Hunts Point Avenue, the line would split with one taking over the Pelham Line's elevated portion and the other continuing on the Hell Gate Line to East 180th Street, where it would take over the Dyer Avenue Line. East 180th Street would get reconfigured into a four-track station for a cross-platform transfer to 2nd Avenue trains, while the 6th would be cut back to Hunts Point Avenue, though the third track would be used to get the 6th to Westchester Yard. 
1972, the main portion of the 2nd Avenue subway began construction, and officials were optimistic that the subway with its Bronx and Brooklyn branches would be finished by the 1990s. In fact, they released a brochure to celebrate that construction was happening, and let me read a portion of it. And please don't skip it, as it is pretty interesting. Groundbreaking ceremonies for the line that almost never was, was held on October 27, 1972, at East 103rd Street and 2nd Avenue, 53 years after engineer Turner started his study. Oh, if they knew what happened three years later. Due to the 1975 fiscal crisis, the 2nd Avenue subway was shelved. In the 1990s, when New York City recovered from the fiscal crisis, the MTA again started playing the 2nd Avenue subway. And by 2004, they settled on a route that pretty much everyone in the transit community criticized. I don't want to bore you with every criticism, so here are some on screen, and let's continue. One criticism was that the MTA did not include any branches to the Bronx, only provisions at around 120th Street, just showing that Bronx lines were shelved for good. Anyway, you know the rest. Construction started in 2007, first phase opened in 2017, second phase to start construction by the end of this year, and is set to hopefully open by 2030. The Bronx branches of the 2nd Avenue subway are still alive because remnants of the project exist. You just have to know where to look. In the middle of the Bronx, there seems to be an open cut with two tracks in it. This open cut extends further south into the southern Bronx to Hunts Point and Port Morris. What does that have to do with this project? Well, that open cut is currently used by Amtrak Northeast Corridor Services and is Amtrak's Hell Gate Line. But this open cut was to be used for the 2nd Avenue subway when it ran express in the South Bronx to the Dyer Avenue line. On the Pelham line, there exists a third track. That third track is used for the 6th Express service. But under the program for action, when the 2nd Avenue subway was to take over the elevated portion of Pelham, it was proposed that Pelham Express service would end so that the third track could be used for six trains heading to the Westchester Yard. This is where most rail fans would again try to read my mind and think that I would say yes before proposing some grand subway line in the Bronx. But this is a more complex question than meets the eye. So let's take a look at some numbers. And before you pause and go write some long comments about how much I am wrong and that these plans should be revived plus whatever crazy subway proposal that you want to add, just stop and listen because I am sick and tired of repeating myself to people who don't watch the video the entire way through and literally talk about things that I address in this video. Now, the reasoning for the 2nd Avenue subway to extend to the Bronx is that the Bronx services to and from Manhattan are over capacity. So let's see some numbers. Currently, 93 trains per hour run between the Bronx and Manhattan. These trains can handle about 180,000 riders per hour. The Bronx currently has 580,000 workers, with 333,000 of them working in the four other boroughs. Not all of them will go to Manhattan, of course. But even if they all want to, every worker can fit into a subway car during rush hour. But even when we need more capacity, extending the 2nd Avenue subway isn't the way to do it, as that should be the last resort. First, regional rail on Metro North would help with some of the capacity constraints to Manhattan. If you're interested, I link the 3rd Avenue replacement project in the description box below. Second, the interlining is a powerful tool to increase capacity. Currently, in my reverse branching video, to maximize capacity, reverse branching needs to end. This means that the 5 will stay with the 4 via Jerome, while the 3 gets extended to the Bronx, taking over service to Dyer. 
This means that the 5 is essentially a filler line until Utica gets built, and that project needs to be built like now. But I'll reserve Utica in a future video. Before anyone from the comments starts yelling at me about one-seat rides and how White Plains has a strong preference for Lexington, here is a portion from my reverse branching video. Even White Plains, which has a heavy preference for reverse branching to Lexington, doesn't have real choice. Only three stations on White Plains during rush hour, Grand Concourse, 3rd Avenue, 149th Street, and East 180th Street, get real choice between the 2 and 5. And no, the 5 north of East 180th Street doesn't count, because that arrives like every 15 minutes, which makes it unreliable. The rest, well, you have to transfer, or walk extra on Southern Boulevard to catch the 6. Anyway, to make this all happen, the 142nd Street Junction and the 135th Street Station on the Lenox Avenue line needs to be reconfigured. The westernmost track will be shuttle train only with the middle and eastern tracks serving the two and three trains. The current Bronx-bound platform would be turned into an island platform, while the Bronx-bound track would be moved to the east. At 149th Street Grand Concourse, we would have to expand the station to accommodate the transferring commuters. People might hate it, but with trains arriving every two minutes to a common destination, the transfer would be a lot shorter. That is, in my opinion, way better than waiting 6 minutes for a 5, only for it to stop at 149th Street because of a 4 train ahead and crawling through the C-curve at 10 miles per hour. At Bedford Park Boulevard on the Jerome Avenue line, the station should get expanded to accommodate short-turning 5 trains, as Woodlawn can only handle 24 trains per hour. Rogers Junction would need to be eliminated. By building two new switches after Nostrand, the two and three trains can merge onto the Nostrand Avenue line without the four and five interfering it to head further east to Crown Heights and new lots. The final piece of the puzzle is to build tail tracks out of Flatbush Avenue on the Nostrand Avenue line so that the terminal can handle more trains. The six would need some love too. Currently, locals and expresses at Parkchester have to merge in front of one another, causing delays. But by expanding the Westchester Square station and reconfiguring the tracks, that delay would be gone. All of these fixes would come in at around $2 billion, with a capacity increase of 30 to 35 trains per hour. That is the capacity output of a new subway, which would be around $9 billion. And mind you, I didn't include the interlining concourse nor expanding one train service, so I think the choice here is obvious. But just because the Bronx doesn't need a new rail line into Manhattan doesn't mean that the 2nd Avenue subway should end at 125th Street. In the short term, meaning like now, the MTA should amend Phase 2 of the 2nd Avenue subway to head via 125th Street to St. Nicholas Avenue. This would serve as a nice crosstown line hitting up all of the north-south lines while decongesting the mess known as 125th Street above. Also, some sort of rail service cross town in the Bronx, either extending the D to Co-op City via Gun Hill Road or branching the concourse line at Fordham Road, should be considered. An extension of the 6 to Co-op City should be considered, in conjunction with the D-train plans. But what if all the deinterline services get overcrowded and we need more capacity? Well then, that is going to involve the 2nd Avenue subway. The first step is to create a branch of the 2nd Avenue subway to head to the Bronx. The first stop would be 138th Street for a transfer to the 6th, then 149th Street to supplement the loss of direct east side service. It will then curve to the east, under 163rd Street and stop at Southern Boulevard for a transfer to the 6 again. It will then go under Bruckner Boulevard, and emerge onto Bruckner Expressway on an L, and run to Throgs Neck, thus serving one of the last remaining transit deserts in the Bronx. Or it can go elevated on Lafayette or Story Avenue, serving deeper into Throgs Neck, though it would be more complex to build. 
if even more capacity is needed in the Bronx, then a second branch would be added, taking over Dyer from the IRT. The 125th Street portion of the 2nd Avenue subway would then be converted into a shuttle so that the Bronx tunnels can get full track capacity. I don't intend for the 2nd Avenue subway to be extended to the Bronx anytime soon. As I want the 2nd Avenue subway to be extended via 125th Street, Regional Rail on Metro North, the interlining the IRT, and the introduction of a cross Bronx subway to take priority. I am just proposing ideas in the event that all these projects are finished and the Manhattan Bronx rail tunnels are stretched to their maximum capacity. When the 2nd Avenue subway was proposed, planners wanted to extend it to the Bronx. Now, more than 100 years later, we should take a different strategy, the interlining and regional rail, because that is a way cheaper and achieves almost the same outcome as extending the subway to the Bronx, adding more capacity between the Bronx and Manhattan. There will be a time when extending the 2nd Avenue subway is necessary, and the 2nd Avenue subway should be extended to the Eastern Bronx to facilitate the interlining. Anyway, that marks the end of this video. What are your thoughts on the 2nd Avenue subway Bronx branches? Let us know in the comments below, and have a good day.